Elite Gaming. What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ, and it's the first weekend of the month, so it's time to do our PC build of the month. I would like to apologize in advance if my voice sounds a little scratchy, I'm just getting over a cold. Hopefully it's not too distracting. But this month's build will be a budget PC, and we're looking to run Destiny, Overwatch, and why not, we'll try some PUBG. The budget's going to be $500 for the PC itself, and we'll also do around a $750 full system build. Just to let you know, as in like all these videos on YouTube that people put up, the build does not include windows 10 there's multiple different ways you can get that some people just don't even activate theirs and they deal with the watermark and the other problems and then some people just already have it so you just have to take that in consideration when you're looking at the overall build so mainly in this video we're going to go over the parts and the next video i make which is probably going to be tomorrow we'll go over the benchmarks for destiny PUBG, and overwatch so you get to see how this PC looks and how it performs, in case you want to build it. Alright, but before we get into the parts, I would just like to ask, if you're watching this video, hit that subscribe button, and then click on that bell to join the notification squad. If you're already subscribed, join the squad, let me know in the comments below that you're part of the notification squad. We're growing more and more each day, and it's a beautiful thing. But let's get into these parts. So the first thing is our processor. Where are we going to go with the processor? Well, we could do a Pentium G4560, right? But the problem with that is the socket, the platform that it sits on, is done. So so that gives you no chance for future upgrades. So we're going to stick with a Ryzen 1200 solid processor. It's on the AM4 platform. So at any point in time in probably the next four years, you're going to be able to take another processor on the AM4 platform and just drop it right in. That type of security is nice and you're also getting what you pay for. This is a really good processor. They perform very well. You're looking at a turbo of 3.4 gigahertz. Next we're going to go into the motherboard. For the motherboard, I chose an ASRock A350M AM4 motherboard, mainly because it's under $50. And before you guys try to burn me at the stake on the comments below, as everyone always does, saying, hey, how could you recommend a non-B350 board? Because overclocking, more RAM slots, all that. But here's the thing. For one, we're trying to keep a low budget. And for two, a lot of people that build computers or want to get into building computers are afraid of overclocking. So recommending a board that's maybe $20 or $30 more when we only have a $500 budget is not always the best. And with the stock cooler on the 1200, you might only get 3.5, 3.6 gigahertz. You're already turbo in the 3.4. It's not a huge, significant advantage. And once again, since we're on the budget, and I would say we're going to stick with an A320 board. This board doesn't have any of the bells and whistles, but it's a great board. It's solid. It'll do the job. Next, let's go over to storage. And I know this is going to cause some controversy, but I recommend getting a Kingston Digital 120 gigabyte A400 SSD. Now, if we map this out real quick, our Windows 10 install is going to take about 20 gigs, give or take. The drive is going to start at about 111 gigabytes. So now we're down to 90, but Overwatch and PUBG are only nine gigabytes each. Destiny is sitting somewhere around 60, so you're going to be perfectly fine if you're just trying to run these three games. Now, if you want to go with a one terabyte slower drive and not get the advantage of the boot and the loading in, that's on you. But just since no computer today can just survive with 120 gigabytes, I also want to throw in a Western Digital 320 gig standard hard drive. These hard drives are pretty slow. I think it's an eight megabyte cache, but that's okay because we're going to boot off of our SSD. And this is just mainly for videos, pictures, whatever else you have. You can even move the downloads folder to that. And you know what? I'll show you all that in tomorrow's video, how to make better use of your SSD when you have a secondary drive. So with these two drives together, you're going to get the advantage of being able to boot into your games quick and everything loading up nice. Shannon plays Destiny off an SSD and she says she loads in sometimes a full minute before other group members even get there, which that's amazing. But next, let's go to our RAM. By the way, both hard drives are on Amazon and our RAM is as well. And we're going to go for a Viper Elite Series DDR4 8GB 2x4 kit and only because it's just nice and cheap honestly i think this kit is hideous so if you want to spend an extra five bucks to get something a little bit different go right ahead but i'm trying to keep under the 500 dollars total price range so in that case i don't really care what it looks like pc4 24,000 is compatible with ryzen so we should have no compatibility problems Next, let's look at our PSU. We're going to go over to Outlet PC, the same place where we got the processor, and we're going to pick up an EVGA 80 plus 430 watts. Now, this complete system is going to sit around 270 watts. 430 is perfect. We're going to have no problems at all, and I've used these power supplies before. They work great. They're reliable, just as long as you don't overdo it. Like, you're not going to put a GTX 1070 with this power supply. But if you ever wanted to go future upgrades, you can do some mod upgrades, and you really shouldn't have a problem. 
Now, before we get into our case, let's look at our graphics card. We're gonna go for a GeForce GTX 1050 Mini. That's the Zotac 2 gigabyte. You're getting a nice small card for $112.99, and you're gonna purchase this off Superbiz. I actually like this nice little form factor card. It's great because it can fit in a lot of places. It's only gonna use 75 watts, and it has killer game performance for its price. These things used to cost around 90 to 100 bucks back about a year ago, but now you gotta pay 112. And this is the problem building a PC in 2017 that every YouTuber in the world is bitching about. We don't really need to go into that, but nevertheless, you gotta pay if you wanna play, right? We're still gonna get the build at 500 bucks, and this is a very solid card, despite its very small stature. And we're gonna see that on the benchmarks tomorrow. So lastly, we're gonna go for our case, then we're gonna look at the total parts list and then the full system build. So for the case, I like to go with the Bit Phoenix. I think they call this one the Neo or Neox. If you go to other sites, here they just call it the BFC Neo and that's on Amazon and it comes in at $44.99. I've built many of computer in this case and I think it's pretty nice. Got a nice little side window. It's a nice smaller case. We'll look at its dimensions. One thing to keep in mind, it only has one cooling fan in it. So we're gonna have to fix that, but it has nice little cut outs behind the mesh in the front so when you add extra fans they actually look pretty nice and it has a bunch of other nice little options like a removable dust tray for the PSU which is always nice but as I said before when you put some fans in it, it looks kind of like this And those fans are gonna be the tried and true Cooler Master Sickle Flow. Go back over to Super Bids. You can pick these up for $4.89 each. Now you have a decision to make here. You can make this thing custom now. What colors would you like to use? I just went ahead and got three, but you can go with two red, two blue, or two green and just snap them right up the front. It has two spots for 120 millimeter fans in the front, just to be clear. And when I said three, I meant one in the back as well. And there you have it. There's the parts for our nice little cheap build. Let's look at the total list here and looking at the list you see we are just shy of $500. Of course if you add in that extra fan like I did you're a little bit over but that's no problem. You can finagle or move this around any way you want and these are all the places where to get your parts. Uh, another upgrade I would kind of suggest though if you had an extra 25 bucks throw out that Western Digital 320 gigabyte and go with a Caviar Blue one terabyte, a newer drive. But that's just my personal opinion. This build's actually pretty solid and on a budget, you'll have a very good gaming experience here. But now let's look for the full system build. Say you're just trying to get into PC gaming or you're just interested in some more deals. Let's start with a monitor. For the monitor, I would go with HP because there's some really nice deals on HP. I'm personally using an HP Omen right now, a 32 inch 1440p monitor. So I know the brand is good. I've had a good experience with mine so far so it's easy for me to recommend so we'll start off for a hundred dollar budget on the monitor you have a 21.5 inch led hdmi connection monitor which will work perfect the only thing is there's no smoke and mirrors here this thing is what it is this is what you're getting you know 60 hertz it's not bad it's a good starter monitor but if you save up 30 more dollars you can get something a lot nicer a 23.8 inch hp monitor with a lot more smoke and mirrors it's going to be a little bit quicker it's got a better stand it's just all around a better monitor, but that's really up to you because you are on a budget if you're looking to build something like this. Now we're going to go over to a keyboard and mouse, and for a budget, you really can't beat the Cooler Master Devastator 2 kit. This used to be about a $24, $26 kit. Now we're up to $28, but if you decided to go with the green LED lights and you want a green keyboard and mouse, you can actually get it for like 12 or 13 bucks. You go over to the green kit and you print out the rebate forms. It'll be $27.19 up front. Follow the directions and you'll actually get this keyboard and mouse for $12.19. So there you go. That's an amazing deal because these are actually pretty solid. I mean, they are on the cheaper end. They're not something like a $50 Corsair mouse and a $50 Corsair mechanical keyboard, but they're good for what they are. And lastly, you want to hear this shit. So sometimes I suggest speakers, which are great because you can listen to music in your room while you do other things. Computers a multimedia device. You can do so much stuff. But on this, we're just going to go with a headset and we're going to go with the Sadie's SA810. The reason why this headset? Because why not? It's $23.99. I've bought multiple Sadie's headsets. I know a couple people who have them. I don't personally use them myself, but my kids do, so you know they take a beating, and they generally work pretty good. Uh, some of the buttons on them feel a little flimsy, but overall, you get what you pay for, but without a name here, you're also getting a little more, because no one knows who Sadie's is. <laughs> 
So that means you're getting a good price. No, they really are solid. They're a good pickup if you need a headset. In fact, even if you need like a backup headset, they're a really solid pickup. But that's it for the full system build. And as I said, on the next video, we'll have some benchmarks. I'll show you guys how to properly use your storage devices if you don't know how to do something like that. And we'll see how good this baby performs. So until then, come down to the Discord, talk to me there, or I'll see you in one of our live streams. My name is Andrew. This is Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks for watching, guys.